Hi everybody, what I'm going to show you next is how we used the Timi suite, meaning Timi Modeling and Anatella, at VU, a Belgian telco operator, to make some next best offer models and also churn models. Okay. Yeah. So hi everybody, my name is, uh, is Christoph. I work for uh, Agilitic, a small, uh, small startup uh, in data mining, data science, and we actually work with, with Timi. What I'm going to show you now is what we've done over the last couple of months at, uh, at VU, the co company, famous in uh, Wallonia at least, um, in, in two, different, uh, two different approaches. It's going to be less sexy than what Marion just showed you, <laughs> but still uh, very valuable. So brief introduction, telco sector evolves in a very rapidly changing context, uh, fierce competition, you know, we also have conglomerates of a lot of companies buying each other, Telenet buying base, all that stuff. So it's moving fast uh, and there are a lot of, of, uh, of changes. You also have regulatory boundaries. So I mean, you can't do whatever you want to do. You have uh, legal uh, obligations like uh, people now can compare their offers. They can do different stuff. So you need to be very cautious with that. Uh, market polarization. So traditionally what you had in the past, like you had your television, at VU, you had your phone at Belkacom, and now everyone tends to uh, concentrate, meaning you have less and less potential clients on the market. And last, uh, last element is also the old historical clients erosion. So before, VU had all their clients had the television at VU. Now you have different alternatives to get your television, your cable, and this means that your uh, portfolio is like decreasing over time. So the big challenge there is still try to grow, or at least not to uh, lose too many clients and, and keep your existing customers. So this led into two big problematics that we thought could be solved uh, using predictive modeling. And Timmy, so the first one we call it next best offer. It's basically you take the best product or option that you can propose to your clients while you have it on the phone. And the second one was churn reduction, churn avoidance, a very classical issue, especially in the telco sector. So we developed uh, these, two, uh, these two models. Well, there were more than two, but we followed this two approach and I will go a bit more into the details of this using every time uh, Anatella and Timmy, of course. We had big constraints at VU especially. Uh, at VU, well, they didn't have any data miner or any data scientists. It was almost an unknown area there when we came. There was no real trust from the sales and retention team. So they said, yeah. I mean, I know my business more than you do. You can't do better than another, what I've done over the past. Uh, there was also running some, they were also running some uh, campaign already. So from there, what would they call their good feel? They say, ah, I'm going to target these clients and these clients. So you can touch these campaigns. These clients are already targeted. And of course, very limited budgets. So knowing this, we still managed to, uh, to do up some stuff. So I'm going to start with the next best offer project and then rapidly go to uh, the churn reduction one. Uh, actually, the development of what we call NBO projects was quite fast and easy. So 27 models for all the products and options that we wanted to deliver were developed within two months by two, the equivalent of two FTEs, one junior and one more senior. And after that, each client received the probability to buy all the 27 products or options. Uh, we submitted the best two to the call operators. So they would only receive, they would see on their screen whenever a client would call, they would see either, well, the first and the second product slash option uh, that would best fit the client needs based on the models. And on top of that, we also uh, provide them with the main characteristic of these clients. So meaning what were the more uh, important variables that were the that were given for the clients. So it was, according to us, quite fast and easy, but it also delivers great results. So on some targeted campaigns, again, with a lot of constraints, we managed just at first shot to increase the sales by 50%. That was just a test campaign we ran. So in parallel, one campaign with random people, one campaign with high score. We had some constraints on the volume, so we had to take a lot, but still we could increase sales by 50%. That helped already to uh, at least convince a little bit the, the sales team that the approach was worth it. Uh, 
what was also very interesting is that by doing that, we could decrease the churn by 15%. So customers in the right offer, they tend to churn less because they don't have any surprise at the end of the month, etc. So that was also very important. It was a side effect and a good one. And it also improved coaching. Uh, we had noticed that at call center, you have a lot of turnover, a lot of junior people, well, new call center agents coming in. And this, help, this tool also helped them by you know, having one single message, I'm gonna talk about this project only using these arguments. So that helped a lot. That was for the NBO projects. No, um, yeah, don't matter. This is the, the wrong title, but I'm gonna talk about the chair one still. Uh, we had, before actually we could work on this model, we had some consultants with not a lot of, uh, of background in that area, and they were using, to our opinion, some inappropriate tools, and they built a model. I will come to the results right after that. And after we came, just not, it's not commercial speech here, right? just to show the difference. But uh, we, we came in with a bit of experience and, uh, and the, suites, the team is sweet. So this is back testing. So we just developed our model using the same data sets. Okay? We developed them and then on a, on a test set, we just try our different algorithm. That was the one that was developed before and that was the one that were, uh, that were developed afterwards. So we could see a significant improve. Uh, again, we use that, not the, the first part, but at least the second one, to actually explain easily to people what would be the benefit of using this kind of models. So what was for us very, a success factor of, of this was to spend time on the business understanding and really be with your clients rather than being on your machine trying to find the right algorithm. That was very important for us. And also specifically in this context, uh, we could work with all available data. We didn't need to sample the data. We could take, like, take it in. We had like at the beginning, I think, about 1,500 variables, which for us was a lot, especially considering the million, million clients we have. And we could retrain the model very frequently. Uh, we didn't have to wait like two other months. Yeah, you know, we have to uh, change this parameter because the distribution has changed and all that stuff. So that was very convenient. And of course, what was very important in the VU context was to easily automate the scoring. So now every week we can produce a file of the most risky churner so that the retention cell and retention agents can just call them. So that was a bit about the two projects uh, at VU. And or just a conclusion of what we think and how we define. So the, the right combination of still a bit of expertise, of course. Uh, it's not a tool to put in everyone's hand, just uh, sometimes it can have it has to be used wisely. So in the collaboration of uh, Business Inside of Timmy, um, we think that uh, this tool is quite fast and fast is really a matter of ROI. Because as Marie-Ange just said it, for some problematics, you cannot wait like months and months for a model to, to come. It has to go fast. It's also easy. So as I said earlier, you don't need to worry about a lot of technical stuff. You have, still have a bit to do but you can really focus on understanding your data, understanding the questions your clients have. And then it's also accurate. We could see that in the results, which is also quite important. Um, well, it was even, and that was my, uh, that is my conclusion note. It was so, well, so good at least for, um, for them. And then the sales team and retention team now are asking for more and more models. They want to develop models for other products, BTV, all that stuff that are also branded under VU. And they want to develop like models for specific churn cases, like unpaid churn and stuff like that. So for us, that was the main victory. Thank you. Okay, so now uh, to summarize a bit what we've seen, uh, I've presented to you Anatella and Timmy and how is it has been used in the telco sector to predict the next best offering for clients to avoid the churn. Um, and what we can retain from that is Anatimi is quite fast. Uh, you can gain much from that speed. Secondly, it's also very easy to use. Even non-technical people can really easily use, them, use it. And in terms of accuracy, the best proof being that the sales and retention team who are very reluctant at the beginning um, to use some models are now very happy and are asking for more.